What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode on the safety series here on the channel. On this episode number two, we're gonna be taking a look at yet another situation that happened to me. This was the last jump I made before entering quarantine. So this is exactly the last landing I performed and this was not a good way for me to enter quarantine. So let me situate you. This was a regular jump. I was gonna do my regular landing and you will see that there was someone below me. Now, this was an error on my part, but I will explain everything after we see the video. So let's watch it. So as you guys saw in the video, what happened was there was a guy landing below me and I didn't have the discipline needed to not do the turn and I did the turn anyways. This was a mistake on my part. Now. My idea with landing was that I was seeing his circuit since he began and I was doing my own circuit about a thousand feet above his and I was predicting his circuit. I knew what he was going to do. I knew what was the direction of landing that the load organizer defined and from the looks of his circuit, he was going to follow it. He was going to land towards south and I could just do my turn and land alongside him. This was the plan. However, he did not follow a basic rule of skydiving etiquette, which is if you define a path on your final, you need to keep that path no matter what, even if the wind is slightly changed. Now, if you're alone on the sky or if you have a super wide landing area, you can turn to the wind a little bit when you just before you land in order to face the wind a little bit better. But if you have more people landing, especially faster canopies, it is important for jumpers that have bigger canopies to respect the direction of landing and define a heading and just keep that heading all throughout their final. Something curious is the fact that this jumper was jumping after me and he landed before me. This is due to the fact that this jumper opened very low at about 2,500 feet. This is by no means high, and me saying 3,000 feet is probably a little bit conservative towards his side, but I open at 4,000 feet because I have a very fast canopy, and if I have an emergency, I want to have time to solve any problems. I also need time to come back to the drop zone if I am if I have a little bit of a longer spot, I need time to remove my slider, to put away my slider, to undo my chest straps, and he opened a little bit lower. Mistakes do happen, so we already talked to him about that. That's not the point here. The point is that there was a mistake made by both parts. Let's take a look at now at my mistake. We already saw his mistake. His mistake was the fact that he didn't keep his heading and he started turning towards my line of landing even though he couldn't see me and he also opened way too low but now let's take a look at my mistakes which is the important part here we are talking about high performance canopies we are the most experienced pilots we need to be able to work around less experienced people and with the amount of experience that is required to jump a patch and to jump these kinds of high performance canopies it's also a requirement for us pilots to be able to kind of predict and work around other people's mistakes and of course keep everything safe so what did I do wrong? Well, first of all, I didn't respect my five essential key points of having a safe land, which is be at the right altitude, at the right spot, with the right heading, with free aerial space below you, in front of you and on your sides, and with a free landing area. Now, the aspects that were dependent on me were correct because I've done that landing a couple thousand times, but the two key aspects that didn't have anything to do with me were not there. So I was at the right altitude, I was at the right spot, and I had the right heading but I did not have a free airspace below me and I did not have a free landing area per consequence because that jumper was landing. So I failed to have the discipline to not perform the turn. This wasn't the failed discipline because I thought of going around him and just swooping alongside him. That means the landing area for me would be free and by the time I finished my turn, he would be already landing so the aerial space was also free for me. But as you can see, this is not accurate because we can't always predict what other people are going to do. And of course, as every old person ever has said, it's better to keep it safe than to risk it. And I risked it here. And if for some reason something would have gone wrong, if I hit his canopy, I would have probably got, gotten really hurt. I would have probably hit the ground at about 60 kilometers per hour and probably broken a couple of things, my hips, my femur. At a worst case scenario, I would probably be handicapped for life. And that's not worth it to do one last swoop. So now that we better understand what I did wrong in this jump, let's look at the five important aspects of a good swoop. For this, I'm gonna employ the help of a map. So, as you can see, we have our landing area over here and we're gonna quickly review the important aspects of a landing. There are five important things you should have, which is you should be at the right altitude, in the right spot, with the right orientation, the traffic below you on your side and in front of you should be free, and the landing area should be free. So, let's take a look at how these five aspects translate onto the map here. So. Let's imagine we want to land, the, the, the windsock is exactly like this. We want to land towards south on the landing area number three here. We would do exactly this circuit that we see here, except over here we would do our two 360s or one 360 or a 270, whatever you guys are doing, and you would do your landing. Now, 
What I mean when I say you have to be at the correct altitude is that, let's say your turn starts at 1,500 feet. Well, if you get here, let's say this is your canopy, you're doing your circuit, you get here, and you are at 1,300 feet, you should not proceed with your turn. Now, you might say, oh, but I will spin faster. Well, no, you will also hit the ground faster. Um, spinning faster is not an excuse, it's not a way to be able to compensate for a lack of uh, circuit, circuit and altitude awareness and then just bodge a turn together just to do a turn just for the sake of it. So, no, we're not at the right altitude, no turn. Now, right position. This means we should be in the right place. Now, let's say we are just approaching and we're too low. We're gonna start our turn a little bit here. Well, we're not in the right position because we're here and not here. Same thing applies. If we're coming along all the way out from a long spot, when we get here, we're not gonna be in the correct position. We're here where we should be, here facing this way, okay? So that's a position. If you need to be here, this is where you need to be. You will not do a turn where you start here and then you just do a larger turn in order to go there and do half turns in order to be in the correct position and by the end of the turn. No, you start at a good position and the turn is always the same. Just what changes depending on your landing, on the, your landing area is where you start. You don't change where you start based on where you're going to end your turn. So let's say the turn is a physical object, you're just going to set in here. If your turn starts here and you know it's going to end, end here, you're not going to change that. You start here and you end here. Now, if you start over here, let's say you start over here, you're going to start, you're going to end that distance ahead, not the opposite. You're not going to compensate the turn in order to fit because one day you're going to overcompensate and you're going to hit the ground pretty hard. Okay? Now, when I say the third part, which is in the correct orientation. Now, let's say that example of the long spot. Let's say you're coming back from a long spot, you're having fun, blah, 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 and you do get to your position. You do get to your position at the correct altitude, but this is not the orientation you want to be. You want to be like this. So you're, in the wrong, you're not in the correct orientation. You would be in the correct orientation if you had time to go all the way around here and then come through here. Even though you're not respecting the rules of a circuit, this is still acceptable. You're just cutting corners. Um, as long as you insert yourself in the circuit in an educated manner. Uh, now, if you do arrive here and you're, you're in the correct position at the correct altitude, but you're not in the correct orientation, it would be tempting to just do a turn and do a half-assed turn with, uh, with less degrees or something and do it for longer. I don't agree with this since, well, just doing a half-assed turn, even though you're doing less, uh, a, a turn with less degrees, you're gonna subconsciously slow down the turn, and if you slow down too much, you're going for the grass, which is very hard. Let's take a look at the aspect that affected me on the video just saw, which is the free airspace. Before you start the turn, you shouldn't be, if you do your search, you shouldn't do your search and just look at the canopy like it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, you know, you should check the canopy if it's ripped. You should have done that a long time ago, but it's important that before you, you, you start your turn, just keep looking and try to see if the airspace below you, on your sides, especially to the side where you're going to start turning and in front of you are free. And what you should do as an experienced swooper is you should have a couple of jumps under your belt so you can more or less predict how other people are going to do their circuits. If you're the first one to land, well, that's good, that's amazing, that's what we all want. If not, we should be more or less able to predict how they're going to land and then do your circuit accordingly. Now, we all know the risks of not respecting this, doing turns where you shouldn't be doing turns, uh, if the airspace is not free below you. Uh, the wrists are entanglement at a very low altitude and hitting the ground at almost free fall speed because the acceleration of your turn combined with the fact that you have no fabric because you're tangled up with another jumper means you're going straight for the grass which is very hard next up the last thing which is having a clear landing area now let's say you did the perfect circuit hell yeah 1500 feet i'm perfect i'm gonna do the swoop of my life you finish your swoop with that good whip you finish and you're going with a lot of power and suddenly you see a cable, a fence, a post, a rock, something that shouldn't be there. Why is this? Because someone changed something in the landing area. Now, in any reasonable drop zone, the landing area will not be changed, there will not nothing be added, there were no object, foreign objects, no foreign objects will be added to the landing area after um, the plane takes off without notice of the pilot, of course. Now, 
I would advise you, if you're jumping in a new drop zone, even if it's your home drop zone, if you go there, I would recommend you go in the morning, just take a walk, if you can, on the land area. I've always done this, um, and it's prevented me from having some issues. For instance, in Dubai, when I was doing some training there, I wanted to land on the landing area that was going away from the drop zone. And what I did was, before I jumped, I just went and had a walk on the, that landing area. And what I found out was that it was not well maintained, had a lot of holes. If I hadn't checked it, I would just do my swoop, and then I would probably land with my ass on a hole and break my hip bone or something. Which would not be fun for a trip to Dubai, which is not cheap. So, having a clear landing area is something that you should look before you go jump and before you start your landing. While you're coming back, while you're coming back from wherever you were, you were dropped, keep looking at the drop zone. Look at the airspace above the, where you're gonna land. Look at the landing area where you're gonna land. Keep looking, eventually it's gonna start being clearer and clearer. Keep your, keep your altitude awareness, keep looking and see if you see any jumpers coming by and if not, if you're in the right place, the right spot, right altitude, right orientation, the ones below you, the landing area is clear then, have fun and soup that drops on. So these five aspects I just mentioned are the most important parts of having a successful swoop landing. If you have all these five key aspects, you're gonna have a safe landing without any trouble. Now, if you're not disciplined enough to respect these five aspects, sooner or later you're gonna have some troubles and you're gonna get really severely hurt. These canopies are not toys, they endanger your life when you're landing. And just like with guns and cars, you need to have the conscience that you're, you're putting yourself in, at risk and sometimes even others. This should come without a saying for high performance pilots, but also for rookies. It's always good to understand how the airspace works on a drop zone. But of course, this isn't to say you should completely alter your your landing pattern just because someone wants to swoop, just keeping that in mind. And for a swooper, it's important to know that rookies can do some unpredictable stuff and that it's always better for us high-performance pilots to just not risk it and maybe even do a half-braked circuit. It's always good to practice that. So it's preferable to do a half break circuit and just not do a crazy landing. Even if it's a sunset jump and it's the last jump of the weekend, it's better to walk home than to get hurt. I could have gotten really hurt on this jump and although it would be better for me to get hurt before the quarantine because I would have plenty of time to recover, it would still suck and not be good. So what do we learn from this? That discipline is the most important personality trait of a swooper. Discipline is what keeps a swooper alive and it's something necessary in your routine of work. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was very simple and just to review again again another video. Our next episode, we're going to be taking a look at exits and things that can happen when an exit is not performed with discipline. So, until then, I hope you guys have a good day. See you soon.